Christ is risen. Do you seek among the dead? 
inspired have been full now stands with us in holy vision. He is like a shining angel who fires with the piercing voice. Today salvation has come to the world, for Christ is risen as all powerful. Christ our pastor has appeared as a male child, the sun that opens a virgin womb. He is called the Lamb as one destined to be our food, unblemished for he has not tasted of defilement, and perfect for he is our true God. Christ, the crown with which we are blessed, has appeared as a yearling lamb. Freely he has given himself as our cleansing, pastoral sacrifice. From the tomb he has shown forth once again our reigning son of righteousness. David, the ancestor of God, leads the dance before the ark which prefigured thee. Now let us, the holy people of God, sing the fulfillment of the Oh, I see. 
Вина и Святого Духа, и не присмой во век и веков.
white and saving night, sacred and supremely festal, it heralds the radiant day of the resurrection on a timeless light, shone forth bodily from the tomb for all.
the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever to ages of ages.
and of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Paschal Sermon of our Father, one of the Saints, John Chrysostom. If anyone is devout and a lover of God, let him enjoy this beautiful and radiant feast of feasts. If anyone is a wise servant, let him rejoice and enter into the joy of his Lord. If anyone has become weary from fasting, let him now receive his reward. If anyone has labored from the first hour, let him today receive his just reward. If anyone has come at the third hour with thanksgiving, let him keep the feast. If anyone has arrived at this sixth hour, let him have no doubts, for he shall suffer no loss. If anyone has delayed until the ninth hour, let him draw near without hesitation. If anyone has arrived even at the eleventh hour, let him not fear because of his delay. For the Lord is gracious and receives the last, even as the first. He gives rest to him that comes at the eleventh hour, just as to him who has labored from the first. He has mercy upon the last and cares for the first. To the one he gives and to the other he is merciful. He both honors the work and praises the intention. Enter all of you, therefore, into the joy of our Lord, and whether first or last, receive your reward. O rich and poor, one with another, dance for joy. O you ascetics and you negligent, celebrate this day. You that have hated, you that have fasted, and you that have disregarded the fast, rejoice today. The table is full, feast royally, all of you. The calf is fatted, let no one go forth hungry. Let all partake of the feast of faith, of faith. Let all receive the riches of goodness. Let no one lament his poverty, for the universal kingdom is revealed. Let no one mourn his sins, for pardon dawns from the tomb. Let no one fear death, for the Savior's death has set us free. He descended to hell and took hell captive. He embittered it when it tasted of his Foreseeing this, Isaiah exclaimed, Hell was embittered when it encountered thee in the lower regions. It was embittered for it was abolished. It was embittered for it was mocked. It was embittered for it was purged. It was embittered for it was despoiled. It was embittered for it was bound in chains. It took a body and face to face met God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw, but crumbled before what it had not seen. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you are over. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. Christ is risen, and not one dead remains in the tombs. For Christ being raised from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who are asleep. To him be glory and dominion through all the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Christ is risen. This is his archpastoral message from our Father, our beloved, Irene, by the grace of God, <coughs> Christ of Eastern America, of our church. Out of great love for one another, we have been separated, beloved, to repress the dire effects of the coronavirus pandemic, which rages throughout the world. The love of Christ keeps us together as a community bound in love, and indeed a community of love. For no matter how weak and how frail we are as individual persons, when we are brought together as a community of faithful, with Christ is our, in our midst, we become a perfected community of love, His love. We must then ask ourselves, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? From Romans chapter 8. As nothing can separate us from the love of Christ or from one another, we must understand for 
that our self-isolation remains an act of selfishness, of selflessness, and not self-centeredness. Rejoice, therefore, beloved, for he who has crucified for us and for our salvation rose on the third day. Our life will thereby conclude not in death, but in the victory of life over death. Crowned no longer with the wreath of thorns, rather by self-sacrificial love, glowing in the radiance of the resurrection, our Lord filled all in all with light. For he is the light of this world. Now the eye of the heart can perceive, through this unique prism, the very meaning of life itself. Only then will we understand the abundant and deeply personal meaning of life. And none of the problems of this world will be able to detract us from the risen Lord. As such, we have no need to fear. If we apply faith and reason in our lives, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the ever memorable words of St. Paiosios the Athenite, do not give in to panic. Cowards are of no use to anyone. God looks at a person's situation and helps him. No matter what happens, he must continue to pray, to think, and to act. It is best to always stand up to a difficult situation using spiritual means. However, that spiritual boldness, which is born of holiness and striving toward God, is missing today, as is the natural boldness needed in order not to turn coward in the face of danger. Spiritual and natural boldness come from Christ alone, who said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, our interpersonal solidarity, our strength, can only be expressed with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Faith in Christ assumes that we have trust, and that we allow Him, who is truth, to direct us on a path toward His full revelation. During this present Pascha, beloved, we have become pilgrims searching for their revelation. Listen to the voice of God. We directed Israel of old during the first Pascha. Hear him now and obey his life-saving directives on what to eat, how to eat, how to dress, and be prepared to remain in our homes, get ready to move at his command. The Lord also told us to mark our doorposts with the sign of our faith. Thus, when he enters our homes and our hearts, he will prevent any misfortune from entering our lives. Through the risen Savior, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Therefore, beloved, let us together with the plentitude of Christ's Holy Church, our firm community and our sure source of faith, hope, and love, now more than ever, from all of our heart, exclaim, Christ is risen! Indeed. Christos 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 Christ is risen from death, and we thou death by death, and upon the wounds of the wounds of life. Christ is risen from death, and we thou death by death, and upon the wounds of the wounds of life. Christ is risen from death, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon the wounds of the wounds of life. Christ is risen from death, trampling down death by death, and upon the wounds of the wounds of life.
Oh, uh-huh.
health before the fire.
Rejoice and let us be glad in it. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wisdom. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Let us stand. In the first book of Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment to the Holy Spirit to the apostles, whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion laid by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the, of the Father, which he said, you heard, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you or seasons, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come up upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Peace be unto you, as read to us. And with thy spirit.
God, all things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, who was to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Those who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through In the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is risen. Christos was crescent. Christos was crescent. Christos was crescent. Christos was crescent. So I was thinking, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that I know all of us who have been here as the, as the little remnant of Israel, who have been working hard to make sense of these glorious services that we've had through the pandemic. I know I speak for all of you. Thank God it's Pascha. And I truly mean that, even for those of you watching. And as I was watching those of you who came on, on Great Friday, my heart was breaking for you, seeing the pain in your eyes because you couldn't be with the God in the church. You couldn't be a part of this. But I want you to know something. As you heard our beloved Bishop Irene tell us, nothing Nothing, nothing can separate us from Christ. Even now, through this weeks, weeks long of, of, of this coronavirus, it's Pascha. Christ has risen. We, we, we know that. We know that all of our loved ones who have gone before us are basking in the joy that we only feel a fraction of here in the church, in your homes. They receive the fullness of our Lord's resurrection. Our joy is also 
their joy. All the saints in our beautiful church are praising God as we were praising God this morning. From that perspective, everything is just as it should be. Everything is just as it should be. When we sing so gloriously, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and the bottom is in the tomb, destroying life, that's our song. We too are risen. We too are victorious. If there's one thing we can take from this very unique and unusual Great Lenten season in Holy Week, it's that because of our Lord's work, because of His Pascha, we are called now to make a difference. We're called to make a difference. We're not called to be like everybody else and worry and fret. We're called to make a difference in the world. We're called to be that wonderful person who shares the joy of the resurrection. That person who looks out for those in need. As St. Paul says, that person who has the ability to bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ today? Celebrate! Rejoice! That's the law from now until the next 40 days of the Paschal season. Celebrate and rejoice. Even in the midst of all this chaos that's going on. Celebrate and rejoice. Make a difference. Look out for the needy. Call the shut-ins. Reach out to family. And always greet and end that time with Christ is risen. Christos was present. Let us say with all our soul and mind, let us say.
for the divine mission of their sins.
Christian, the founders of benefactors and the holy men of the house. May the Lord God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. His grace, our Father Bishop, be today, all those of the priests and the act and monastic borders. May the Lord God remember his kingdom. Always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The President of our country and all civil authorities, our armed forces and members of our royal family, our parish families, parish council, and all supporting organizations, may the Lord God remember this kingdom. Always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The sick and the suffering, especially those suffering from the virus and all of our shut-ins, may the Lord God remember this kingdom, always, now and ever, and into ages of ages. All of our fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters, the Orthodox depart this life before us, and faith and hope of the resurrection. May the Lord God remember this kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. All those throughout the world who have no one to pray for them, may the Lord God remember this kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Always
join this holy house and with those who went through faith and reverence to the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. God, the holy, be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask the Lord.
grace of Father Bishop Irene, grant the Holy Church to peace, save the honor of the length of days, ready to define the word of thy truth.
And all that stuff we must do is give so often to all of us who believe, according to the original need of each. Sell with those who sell, travel with those who travel by land and by air. Heal the sick of our condition of our souls and bodies. To the grace of compassion and love toward mankind, only God the Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thou holy, but in thy great spirit, now and ever to ages of Asia.
professeur Jean Dubuis qui tourne les cuisses. Those who bless thee. 
and sanctifies those who trust in thee. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church. Sanctify those of the view of thy house. Glorify them to the divine power. And forsake us not to put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy church, and to thy priest, to all those in civil authority, to all thy people. For every good gift, and every perfect gift from above, coming down to the Father of lights, and to thee we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever into ages of ages. To those of you who do have a Paschal basket ready at home, I would ask that you bring it uh, to the screen and we'll say a prayer to bless uh, our, our Paschal basket here. And we'll obviously, through the Holy Spirit, all our baskets will be blessed at this time. Sanctified in the power of the Holy Spirit, 
in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.